Good evening and salutations, my Jim, um, GH fans. Um, alright, so this whole, this whole sunny side story thing, um, listen, I think it was an interesting take on Sunny. You know, we've been so used to the mundane of, him with his family and him, you know, operating business as usual, that this is a chance for, you know, Maurice to kind of get outside his comfort zone, do something different, and, you know, it's a good look for us as viewers to see him in a different setting. But with that being said, um, yeah, I'm kind of, kind of, like, I kind of wanted to go back to how it used to be, you know, like, okay, we did this little side story that's, that's cute and everything like that, but can we get back to Sonny being Sonny, you know, like him with his family, being a mob guy, taking care of business, I, I really needed to kind of, kind of go back to that at some point, because this, this whole, like, memory loss and, listen, the memory loss can be fine, but this whole Sonny not being with his family thing, it's just, it's, I'm kind of over it at this point. Um, I know some people may like it, and that's cool, but me personally, I'm just like, yeah, I need him to actually be, like, be with his family and start to regain his memories and stuff. This whole Lenny and everything is, is nice, but kind of kind of over it now at this point. Um, and yeah, he's with, he's with, um, he's with Lenny and, um, Phyllis, um, we're about to call him Philip, um, with Phyllis and everything, and, um, you know, at first he, he's gonna, you know, he went to leave, you know, he didn't want to be a burden to them, but they're like, you know, Lenny's like, no, you can stay, um, you know, Phyllis thinks it's a good idea if he stays this way, you know, she can regulate his medicine and stuff like that, and, you know, they need help around the place, so, you know, they offer him to stay, and he pretty much offers to cook, um, which is actually pretty interesting. It's like he lost his memory, but yet he still has this has this desire to like cook and stuff. You know, Sonny is known for being an amazing cook, um, and yet those instincts didn't leave him. Um, also, disarming that guy didn't you know didn't go anywhere either. So, um, but yeah, he's with them. And interesting part is towards the end, Nina calls up Phyllis and speaks to Sonny. Um, so that's that's going to be interesting. I can't wait for next week to see what's going to go on with that. Because um, she knows Sonny's voice, so that's just undeniable. Um, but I wonder what she's going to do with it down now. You know, let's, let's rewind back a little bit and you see what I'm talking about. So, Jax comes into Nina's office and Here's the thing, she didn't try to revise history like everyone felt she was. You know, now that she knows that Nell is a daughter, you know, me personally, I know some other people in the comment section, me personally was going to be like, uh, here we go, so now it, it was never Nell's fault, all she needed was love and attention and affection and yada 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 yada, and she didn't get that and she's a bad person because she didn't do that. Not exactly. You know, she was just more upset and saddened by the fact that she didn't really get a chance to know her. Um, she never really got a chance to sit there and tell her that she loved her, that there was somebody in her corner. You know, she acknowledged the fact that she was a horrible person. She did terrible things. Um, she wasn't blind to it. But, you know, at the end of the day... She missed out an opportunity to sit there and know her daughter, so that sucked. But more for the fact that she, that Jax lied to her, you know. Jax lied to her. And that, that's something that she couldn't get past. That she, that he chose Carly to protect Carly over, um, telling her the truth. And then it was something that out of the blue, something that Jax didn't even think of. Um, you know, that... Um, Nina is, um, Wiley's grandmother. 
and she didn't get, she, you know, she wouldn't even have gotten a chance to know a grandson. And Jax was like, oh, yeah, I didn't, I really didn't even factor that in. Now, I don't know if he didn't factor that in because, you know, she's a girl and everything like that. You don't think of her as, you know, grandma material, whatever, you know, her being a grandmother. So I, I don't want to give Jax a, a pass on that, but I'm just trying to think in his head. Maybe from a male perspective, you know. I mean, listen, I have my gripes with Nina, um, and I have my gripes with this actress. With that being said, she's not. She, she don't look bad, you know. She, I'm not gonna get into it, but I'm just to saying she doesn't look bad. So you know, as a man, I'm snitted thinking, okay, you know, if I'm with her, I'm not snitted thinking her as, you know, grandma or whatever. So. Maybe it's just me trying to give him a pass a little bit, but that's just where I'm coming from. Also, I guess the fact that, I mean, let's be honest, the fact that, you know, this whole protecting Carly and making sure that, you know, she doesn't drudge up any skeletons or whatever to reopen the investigation, um, you know, all that factor in, that's just something that he'd over overlooked. So, um... Which I think that's the majority of why he didn't even sit there and think of that. Anyway, she wants no parts of him and she pretty much tells him to get the hell out of her office. Well, at this point she just turns her back and at this point it's like, bro, you, you should just leave. Just leave. Um, you know, it's kind of funny because he kept saying trying to compare himself to Valentine a little bit, like... You know, you're a liar, this, that, and the third, and you lied to her, and yada, 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 and like, bro, you lied to her, too. He did it. You know what? I'll have to tell you, too, the sad thing is that they both did it to either protect her or protect somebody else, but they still did it. So, yeah. Um, Michael and Willow, Let's just get them out the way because I, I just don't know what the hell is going on with them. And you know what's sad? <laughs> okay, so Chase comes over the house and informs Mike on Willow that, hey, you know, just let you know, I know you guys are going to have the funeral. We're, we're going to put some people out on the streets just to make sure, you know, everything is running, running COVID, you know, covid or whatever. So Michael informs Carly and um, Chase is pretty much says that I still miss you and stuff. Um... I don't remember if she actually said that back, but he was just like, you know, I still miss you. And it's terrible timing that, you know, he's going through his stuff with his dad, because, you know, I still want to be with you. Um, and then he leaves. Now, he leaves, he goes to Finn, and he is all ecstatic. One second. He is all ecstatic, you know, he's happy that his brother gave him some advice that want to work now. And it's really sad, because... Michael informed Willow that it just wasn't a good idea for her to leave the, the mansion. Be, not just because of Franco now, but because of, you know, Sonny and his enemies and stuff like that. You know, it's just not a good time. And also, you know, he mentions the fact that, you know, a lot of people may think that he may take over the family business, um, being a son and all. And between Franco and now the power vacuum... And to Jason steps in, um, it's just not a good idea for him to really go anywhere. I mean, not a good idea for her to go anywhere and for her to just sit there and think about it. Um, and I'm not going to lie, I kind of sat there like, you know, Willow, did you really understand what you were getting into when you decided to marry Michael, you know? It wasn't just the crazy fights at the Quartermains, it was also the fact that his last name is Corentos, you know? And it does come with certain things. Um, so she has that puzzled look on her face. And you know she's probably going to wind up taking, um, you know, taking the, um, taking the offer and staying with the mansion, you know, staying in the mansion. If nothing else, she could sit there and say she's doing it for Wiley, so, you know, there's that. Um, now, quick talk, um, Michael... Carly and Jason had a discussion about the funeral, and Michael agreed. 
he also talked to Chrissy and she agreed as well, which is, you know, it's, I'm not going to lie, it's kind of sad because it's like, all right, so is Christina ever actually going to come, like, back on the show? Like, I know I think she came for, like, one episode or something, but is she actually going to come back on the show? Um, and if she does, I think they should probably give her something to do, you know? She had the whole Shiloh story and that was great. It gave her something to do. Um, I feel like whenever they give her something to do, then she shines. Whenever she's just there to be there, it's like, what's the point, you know? And I'm not going to really sit there and mention the last time that they gotten somebody else to play Christina and how much of a disaster that was, both for storyline and for the actress that played her. So if they're going to actually bring her back, give her something to do. Um... But yeah, he agreed that, you know, it's good for the family and, you know, for everyone to be safe as Jason takes over and the funeral happens, so there's that. Now, on the other side, before Chase came in, you know, acting just ecstatic, Jackie um, talked to Finn and Jackie was like, you know, I don't want you to run the test pretty much because if you do, you're going to be compelled to sit there and tell chase and gregory and that's going to blow up their lives you know you don't want to do that pretty much just leave things to waste you know leave things status quo wise and um ben is just like i don't know if i can do that you know and he, he lays out some plan he lays out some scenario like if something happens to him you know because he don't you know you got shot he was like if something happens and you know chase is my son that at least Chase and Violet can have each other. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, Chase and Violet can still have each other if, um, you know, she considers, you know, she thinks of him as his uncle. So, I'm not going to lie, that, that, that whole reasoning right there just kind of doesn't really, it doesn't track, okay? You're doing this for your own reasons, which is fine, um... But that's what you're doing this for. You want to know because you want to know. Let's not try to throw in other BS scenarios into it because that's what it is. And I understand where Jackie's coming from, but I still think he should find out what's going on. And that's what he did. He gave um, the sample to one of the nurses and told her to run a comparison to see, you know, if they're a match. Um... I'm not going to lie, what exactly are they looking for? I'm not going to really sit there and try to get into specifics. The only reason I'm sitting there asking that is because, well, if you watch this and you watch days or if you, whatever. Point is, um, they try to do a, a DNA comparison between one character and a baby. And the problem with it was is that it matched. But the guy named Tripp had has a brother named Charlie and you know he got caught up in this whole R.A.P.E. allegation because they masked DNA and they confirmed that um Henry the baby and Charlie was you know they thought they were father and son because their DNA matched they didn't do I guess these extra steps they would have normally done if they know what to look for. So I'm just wondering, is that the same thing? Um, you know, because, listen, as far as they know, they're, brother and they're, they're brothers. So of course their DNA is going to be very similar. But what are they looking for? I think that's my question. So if anyone knows the answer to that, or really understand what I was really asking, please let me know. Um... But yeah, anyway, Chase came in and Jackie left and, you know, Chase gave Finn a hug and now Finn is just like, I don't know if I want to disrupt his life by unraveling his world by, you know, if I'm it, if I am his father or, you know, should I just know to know, like he's kind of torn still. Um, Anna, 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 Anna. Anna and Valentine can finish their comparing the dots, and of course, Anna asked the question of, you know, why didn't Peter tell me, you know, he knew, um, 
Drew back when he was in the military or whatever. And I'm just gonna dick him because he's a liar. Um, now they start talking and at some point they talk about Ulbrich. And they talk about, um, they talk about Franco. And they're connecting dots and Valentine's like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I can't really finish connecting the dots with her because that would expose um, Peter's secret. You know, earlier he had a conversation with Peter when Peter was frantic when he thought that Jason knew, you know, or somebody knew about his little escapades with Jason and Drew and stuff. So they cut the conversation short. Um, Valentine comes to visit um, Peter oddly. Which is, I'm not going to lie, it was kind of weird. Like, why didn't you go to the office? Somehow, he wound up going to um, Nathan's grave site where he saw Peter. Um, now, Peter and um, Britt were exchanging words or whatever. And Britt pretty much was just like, you know, you'll never be as good as Nathan. You know, like, what are you, what are you doing here? You'll never be as good as Nathan. And... You know, you are more like your father than your mother. And then she leaves and, you know, Peter, Peter, I'm not going to lie. I feel like this guy could have probably used some sessions at a psychiatrist or a therapist or somebody to work out whatever issues or demons this guy has. Because the minute Brit is gone, he starts, and this is kind of low a little bit too. No, this is low. There's no kind of, this is low. So he starts talking to um, Nathan's grave and he's all like, oh, you're going to be a memory and James is going to see me as a father and, you know, I'm so sick and tired of people comparing me to you and, you know, once I, you know, marry Maxie, he's only, you know, she's only going to think of me and not you and I'm like, is this the equivalent of nana nana boo boo, I gotta have your girl now? Like, is, like, what, what was that about? <laughs> Just, I don't. Peter, he's he is definitely an interesting character. I know there's a lot of people that don't like him. Um, I definitely say he's a very interesting and very tormented character. Um, at some point, Valentine overhears that, and I'm not gonna lie, Valentine in his head should have been like, "Man, a couple of therapy sessions would have done this guy some good." But um, and he walks up to him, and he pretty much informs him that Obrick is, you know out in the loose, and, um, you know, Franco knows your secret a little bit, or he's starting to regain stuff, like, you need to be on the lookout for this stuff, you know, just to kind of give him a heads up, um, of course, I think a good heads up probably would have been to get this guy some therapy lessons, but, you know, but whatever, whatever, so, I think the last scene, or the last two scenes, I think. Because I'm not going to lie. People start bouncing around. So, I'm pretty sure I probably missed something. But, um... Martin Gray got a, um... Cell phone. When he was at the Metro Court. And he got a chance to talk to his mother. And, you know, he had a good conversation with her. He comes over Carly's place. And he's like, you know, I had a good conversation with my mother. And she's being taken care of well. And, you know, I'm happy for that. Just to let you know, um... You know, little old frail lady is going to keep the peace for long. Um, but he also, he's also like, you know, listen, I'm going to not search for my mother tomorrow because of the whole funeral thing. But, yeah, just so that you know, her, she's not, she's not going to keep the peace for long. Just to let you know. And I don't think that was a threat. Like, that wasn't him threatening Carly and Jason. That was him warning them that Cyrus... You know, he's not the type of person that's just going to sit there and just kind of twiddle his thumbs for long. So, I don't know what Jason Jason's going to do, um, but they, they, they're going to have to figure out something. Um, you know, I'm still wondering what they actually want to do with Cyrus for a minute. Because when Jason and Sonny were talking, you know, Sonny was like, Sonny, I think Sonny was sitting there saying, like, listen, if we put a bullet in Cyrus's head, his partners are just going to send somebody new. We need to sit there and try to make them lose confidence in Cyrus. This way they can take their business somewhere else. I don't see that happening. So, 
maybe you should just put a bullet in his head and just, you know, prepare for the next guy and, you know, start over again. I don't know. I mean, listen, nothing short of a bullet is going to stop Cyrus from terrorizing his town. We all know this at this point. The writing is all over the wall. Hell, it was in the first episode when Cyrus was really known, when he put out that hit. So, I, I just... I don't know what, what Jason planned on doing, but um, I I think that's just the fastest route. That's just my take. Um, now, the last scene was... I think I already talked about Sonny. Yeah, I think I talked about Sonny mostly, except for the fact that he's going to be staying with Lenny and Phyllis. And somebody calls um, the bar, and he answers, and Nina's on the other line. So... Yeah, I guess we'll just wait and see what happens with that. I did miss something. Um, Anna questions Britt about um, Lisa's whereabouts. And I'm not going to lie, there was one point where Anna was like, listen, how about you tell me where she's at, and I won't shoot her on sight. I was like, wow, Anna, that that's a threat. That is a bold, openly threat. Now... Here's the thing, I have no use for Anna. But before everyone kind of jumps down in Anna's throat for a minute, let's just kind of just run this back to where Obrek decided to burn down the stables and leave. Um, well, this is after she um, captured and tortured Peter for weeks. And then, um, what is she? She break his arm or his leg or something? I'm sensing a movie with Stephen King. But she did something. Um, and then, you know, she set, I don't know, she set the um, the place on fire or something. Somehow, the, the place where Peter was held um, hostage at was on fire. And she just stood there and just, you know, just started laughing. So, I mean, listen, rather, you, you know, that's her son or her nephew, I... I honestly understand why Anna wants to put a bullet in Ulbricht's head. I I totally understand that. Even though I don't like Anna, I get where she's coming from. But yeah, she pretty much threatened um, Ulbricht and was just asking for information from Britt. Which, by the way, she wasn't budging. Um, and I think it just kind of ended on that note. And I think that's about it. I think I kind of connected all the dots. If I missed anything, please let me know. Um, what are your thoughts on this episode? Did you like it? Did you not like it? I mean, I look at Nina, Nina's character, and she sort of did what some people were sitting there talking about as far as like kind of like revising history a little bit. But she was well aware of what kind of person Nell was. I guess we just have to wait and see. Um, to see if she's going to, um, if she's going to go on that path of revising history and making it seem like Nell was the victim and Carly was the villain. I guess we're just waiting to see. Um, it should be interesting. Again, I have no use for Nina, because I like the whole grudges, because that's just who I am. Um, depends on what it is, but I mostly hold grudges. Um... But this should be really interesting um, as far as Nina's character is concerned um, going for it. How she's going to, you know, handle the whole Carly situation and, you know, should be interesting. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching. I know this came out kind of late. Um, so I appreciate people who watched it um, and who commented and people who didn't comment and just watched it still. Thank you. Um, if you can share this video, that would definitely be really helpful to the channel. Because um, I definitely want to sit there and grow this portion of, you know, my YouTube channel. Because I enjoy talking about, I enjoy talking about soap operas. Because um, I enjoy watching them. You know, and I think it's, it's, you know, I always sit there and, you know, I should tell you the truth. I don't know if there's any actual women that... Um, review any of these, you know, like General Hospital, whatever. 
And I feel like it's just it's just me and Brock TV. And what I like about doing this, one, I like General Hospital. I like good stories with good characters. And, you know, listen, if I can sit there and tell it from a quote-unquote male's perspective, then, yeah. Um, it's funny because... I'm going to be going back to work next week, which probably isn't that funny. But, um, there's a, there's a couple that always comes into my, you know, that comes into the store. And, you know, the wife pretty much got her husband into watching General Hospital. But, again, Sonny is so much of a charismatic, just so much of a charismatic, yeah, charismatic character that... You know, he's a character that doesn't just appeal to women, but he appeals to men. And, you know, soap operas always has this, has somewhat of a stigma of only women can watch it because it's a woman's fantasy. And I heavily disagree on it. I feel like a lot of shows, and I'm just ranting at this point, so if you want to shut off the video, that's fine. I feel like a lot of shows are technically soap operas. You know, there was something on Channel 7 when they were, when they were doing, um, like, they were talking about soap operas or whatever, and some guy, I don't remember who, but he was basically saying that saying a lot of shows, um, like a lot of the foundations are pretty much built off of soap operas, and if you look at General Hospital, or you look at pretty much any show on the CW, um, they all have those elements there, um, you know, action, suspense, romance, um, suspense, thrilling. My, my point is, all the stuff that's in those shows are in a soap opera. It's just, you know what I'm saying? It's just packaged differently. It's just named differently, really. Or they tend to focus on one thing more than the other. But they're pretty much all the same. So, you know, that's another reason why I like doing this, you know, it's because it's Basically, Snitter saying, you know what, listen, you could be a guy and you can still watch soap operas because it has good characters, a, a, a good story, and that's really what that, that matters, you know. You shouldn't have to sit there and not talk about, oh, I watch soap operas because you're a guy. That's BS. Um, so that's why I like doing this, and that's why, you know, I'm, I'm asking people... You know, every now and then to sit there and share the video so you can get more people to watch it and, you know, kind of, you know, start to, you know, dismiss this whole stigma of only women can watch soap operas because that's BS. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching. Let me, do, let me know what you thought of this episode. Um, be safe, everyone, this, and I hope everyone has a great weekend. I will catch you in the next video.